friends and colleagues, especially Your Excellency, Minister Anthony Lok, and your delegation, a very warm welcome to Salita. Indeed, it is a very warm day. <laughs> Actually, perfect day for inaugural flight. The last few days, certain mornings, it was it were quite wet. So today is a very good day. A very warm welcome once again to Salita, and also congratulations to Firefly for your inaugural flight to Salita Airport. Firefly, of course, is not new to Singapore. You first flew to Singapore 10 years ago in 2009. Over the years, you have built up a healthy clientele. And Singapore welcomes Firefly's new service between Salita and Subang airports. Being close to city centres, both in KL as well as in Singapore, you offer uh, special advantages for clients who wanted to be close to the city. And I'm quite sure your service will be an, an attractive uh, option for many travellers. Also, as a turboprop operator, Firefly would find Salita Airport advantages as you do not have to compete with larger aircraft at Changi. As you can see, Salita Airport is such a small airport. I'm quite sure, Your Excellency, from the aeroplane, you could even recognize our faces when we were waiting out there. <laughs> and because of the smallness of the airport, your passengers will be able to enjoy a much more convenient journey as they make their way from the curbside to their plane and vice versa. I wish Firefly success in your operations at Salita Airport. I would like to thank Your Excellency Anthony Lok for joining the inaugural flight. Your presence at Salita Airport signals the very strong bilateral relations between our two countries and also our two ministries. I'll find an opportunity to reciprocate your gesture in due course. Thank you. Yeah. Can I proceed? Let's proceed. Beijing for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Your Excellency, yet. Mr. Corbin Wan, Coordinating Minister for Infrastructure and Minister for Transport, Republic of Singapore. Officials from both Government of Malaysia and Singapore, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, Salam Sejatra. It is an immense privilege to be here to commemorate the inaugural flight of Firefly FY3126 from Subang Airport to Seleta Airport. On behalf of the delegation from Malaysia, allow me to extend my sincere appreciation to our gracious host, the Ministry of Transport, Singapore, especially the Minister, for the warm and generous hospitality accorded to us, as well as the excellent arrangement for this momentous milestone. Two weeks ago, Excellency Minister Ko and I were having a press conference on bilateral transport issue in KLIA. One of the issues highlighted was the airspace issue, as well as the operation of Firefly to Seleta Airport. This inaugural flight certainly represents a significant milestone in enhancing bilateral cooperation between Malaysia and Singapore. After a series of engagement and deliberations between both countries, Malaysia and Singapore are able to achieve some agreements on bilateral relation matters, especially on airspace issue. It has resulted a win-win situation today in which Firefly was granted approval to fly into Seleta Airport. And I'm very glad to be on this inaugural flight just now. And in fact, I make some announcement during the flight on behalf of the crew. Oh. <laughs> Firefly is very excited to return to Singapore to invest in creating greater public awareness of this airport to Malaysians and grow its Singapore operations. Firefly is also improving its frequencies and schedule from Subang Airport to Singapore, focusing on business and corporate customers. This segment is critical in facilitating trade and economic development between the two countries, especially between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. We are starting with two flights a day for this week, but I was told that in the coming weeks, it will be increased to six flights a day. 
to be improved. To enhance the flight safety and efficiency into Seletar Airport, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, CAAS and Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia, CAAM, are working together towards the GPS-based approach to be implemented in Seletar Airport in the near future. Firefly will progressively add more points from Peninsula Malaysia and study the feasibility of resumption of Kuantan, Ipoh, and potentially Malacca. As the airline seeks to mount seasonal service, services in leisure markets and islands around Peninsula Malaysia, it will also ramp, us, ramp up its chartered services. I was uh, talking to the CEO just now. I told him that to look at other destinations besides Subang to fly into Singapore because I think this will be very good for our bilateral relationship as well as to grow our tourism sector in Malaysia. I'm sure many Singaporeans will love to go to Ipoh, will love to go to Kuantan, and especially where Ipoh, there are a lot of hawker foods as well, of besides course. Penang. <laughs> so these are the segments, these are the destinations which I think it will be very popular among Singaporeans. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to emphasize the importance of both Malaysia and Singapore that uh, our bilateral relationships are very, very important, and we treasure this relationship. And both government and uh, both Minister Ko and myself, we have also agreed to set up a high-level committee to review some of the aviation issues and airspace issues, and we are very confident that we can seek a win-win situation for both countries. With the progress that we have made, I'm confident that both countries can reach mutually beneficial solutions and look forward to strengthening our bilateral cooperation in the aviation and tourism sector. We agreed that the fundamental principle to resolve issues of concern in a friendly and constructive manner and work towards amicable solutions. Last but not least, I would like to once again to thank Minister Ko for the warm hospitality and to take this opportunity to congratulate the resumption of Firefly operation into Singapore via Seletar Airport. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Korbunwan and Minister Anthony Lok. The ministers will now take a few questions from the media. Kindly state your name and your media outlet before you state your question. Please use the mic. Thank you. Ministers Faris from today from Singapore. Uh, could you give us a sense, uh, you know, the timeline of when you'll be implementing the GPS procedures and how markedly different would it be from the ILS system? As I also briefly explained in KL a couple of weeks uh, last week, the, there are many different ways of providing instrument-based uh, landing procedures. So iOS is one, GPS is another. So we, we are, from Singapore side, we have worked up some possibility. And in fact, the two regulators will be meeting next week. And I'm quite confident that it can be done pretty soon. Ministers, thank you. I'm Gwyneth from CNA. Just a follow-up question to that. What is the kind of the cost that the GPS, uh, uh, implementing a GPS approach will uh, bring to uh, the airports? As well as, on a separate note, how about the, the RTS supplemental agreement? Are there any details on that uh, for the extension? Thank you. I will answer on behalf of Sarita Airport. Okay. <laughs> because the, yes, indeed, uh, instrument procedures does require some money, and uh, we were prepared to do so for the sake of uh, enhanced safety. Because uh, without instruments, we'll be doing what we have been doing the last 40, 50 years. In other words, uh, relying on the eyes of the pilots. So that is possible most of the time. But sometimes when you have inclement weather, then, uh, then it becomes unsafe. In which case then uh, there'll be inconvenience to passengers because the air controller have to ask the pilots to go somewhere else and cannot land uh, in Salita. But with uh, whether instrument procedure, whether iOS or GPS, in this case GPS, then I think uh, we should be able to overcome such limitations. Yeah. Well, for fly fly, of course, there are costs involved as well to yeah. retrofit the aircraft and all the uh, 12 aircraft, uh, the whole fleet needs to be uh, retrofit. Uh, but of course, uh, in terms of uh, the amount, have to be, uh, I think the questions have to be directed to Firefly. It is a commercial decision uh, by Firefly. Uh, of course, that is a requirement that we have agreed upon by both civil aviation authorities. I think we are working towards that. 
uh, go. Of course, I think uh, uh, the GPS approach is something that uh, we have agreed uh, on both civil aviation authorities, and we are looking forward uh, for Firefly uh, to work towards that uh, in a timely manner. And we are looking at the next maybe six to 12 months. On RTS, uh, of course, your questions just now on RTS. Yes, uh, the Malaysian government have uh, requested an extension uh, of six months' time. Of course, we, we already call it suspension. Uh, of course, we are working on a supplemental agreement uh, for six months. Uh, then we will look at other options, look at options of how to reduce the cost for RTS. But of, co of course, at this point of time, we are still committed to, uh, to ensure the project uh, can be continued. But of course, on our side, uh, we are looking at various options on how to reduce the cost. On uh, suspension, I thought I should just add that the, the uh, bilateral agreement, of course, does not provide for suspension. But like in the case of the HSR bilateral agreement, I think in the spirit of bilateral cooperation, we can always work out some uh, amendments or we call supplementary agreement. So I think the immediate uh, first step is to settle finalize and then sign the supplementary agreement, which we hope could be done soon. And then I will have another media opportunity with uh, Minister Anthony Lok, and we shall sign the supplementary agreement. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Minister Kaur, uh, over here. Yes. Uh, Wei Chang from Zhao Pao. Uh, yes. Is there an indication of how much the L ILS had cost us and whether the new GPS would actually cost more? Uh, as well as uh, does the new GPS system actually address some of the concerns that were raised of the previous ILS system? No, as I, as I said, the, uh, there are different approaches, uh, different alternatives to instrument procedures, and GPS is one, ILS is another. In fact, there are other procedures as well. We go for those uh, where most aircrafts are already equipped with or easier for them to upgrade to. So that's why we went into ILS, but because... Uh, there was some concern from Malaysia's side, which we take into account. So GPS is, a, is another suitable arrangement. Uh, I don't think there's any loss in terms of safety. I think for us, the key point is uh, safety, uh, because from passengers' point of view, the, whether it will cost more or how much more, uh, safety is something which we must not compromise. Yeah. We will take a final question from the media. Mm. Hi, Yunsen from Straits Times Singapore. I wanted to check, um, are there any updates on the high-level committee that has been convened to look at airspace issues? The committee has been formed, so they are in the process of talking. I think the first step is, as usual for committees, settle the terms of reference. My advice to them is don't spend too much time arguing over terms <laughs> of reference. And I think get the process going. I think the first time I met uh, Minister Anthony Locke, that was his uh, very friendly advice to me that I think the key point is get the process started. We know Malaysians uh, uh, aspirations and ambitions and this is an important topic for Anthony, for Mr. Lok's uh, ministry and uh, we will take that into account. I also share with him and he expressed understanding of some of the core interests from Singapore point of view. But as uh, Minister Anthony Lok put it, I think with the right uh, goodwill and win-win, and, and we can always find some uh, common ground and some win-win solutions. Uh, this I'm very confident. Yeah. Thank you, Minister Ko and Minister yeah. Lok. We would like to invite the ministers to take their leave from the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we give our ministers a big round of applause, please? Thank you.